chocolate. I hope they have it. Sometimes they're out. All set. So, eggs. Chocolate. So good. So cheap. Five seventy four for over a pound. See now they they used to I'm sure they used to sell drasties, but this is also Dutch processed. I don't I don't think there's a difference. What about vanilla? And there's flavor. How much is it? What extract is so cheap? Well, I don't know. You do what you want, but this is what I usually use, extract. I usually just get two pounds of sugar. And in fact, it's extremely reasonable here. And butter's gotten really expensive lately. So. All right, let's go to the wax paper area. This is a real bottleneck. It gets me very Great to have for a lot of things. $2,000 oven. You start off at $375. Oh, the reason that this oven, yeah, it's special. Italian people have a different way of doing it. You have to hold it down a long time. <sighs> but it's worth it in the end. So first let's melt some chocolate in the oven while it's preheating. It's, it's in grams. So it's divided weirdly. Each one of these things is just a little over two ounces, and we, for the cake, need six ounces, about. So, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, three times two is six. So while the oven is preheating, this is an oven-safe plate. Just stick it in there. I don't think it should take more than five minutes. I'm getting old. I can't really figure out the time anymore. So this is a good time to, hey baby, get some of our other stuff together. Now, my oven is really small, so I use really small cookie sheets. That's why I'm using six ounces of chocolate. If you have a regular cookie sheet, then you can use eight ounces of chocolate, eight eggs. I'm using six ounces of chocolate and six eggs. Okay. Oh. Need some wax paper, natural wax paper from the co-op. Need some butter, unsalted butter because 
salted butter is for. I don't know who buys it. Not me. So you butter the pan and then you put wax paper on it and then you flip the wax paper. You'll see. So you have the butter in there and what you want to try to do is cover the wax paper with butter. And you take it off and flip it. That way you have buttered wax paper. It's pretty much buttered on both sides. It'll be really easy to lift the cake out. When you put the wax paper in the oven, the edges do burn a little bit. This time. Let's see. But it's not ready yet. In the cake and in the ganache, there's a little espresso. I made a little bit ahead of time. No licking the butter. She likes to lick butter. In fact, I think you know that you're supposed to pour the espresso on the chocolate while it's melting, but I didn't, so I'm going to do it now. Just a little bit. You can see that it's, it's starting to melt. This shouldn't be too much longer. What else? Let me just get the sugar and stuff out. Sugar. Eggs. These are from the co-op. This is fair trade vanilla, so that nobody is damaged in the making of this cake. I have this stand mixer that uh, it's broken. Someone was throwing it out. It only really has one speed. But I will warn you, this is, doesn't really work, so stuff might come flying out. Still, I I have um ice teaspoons in their silver, <laughs> so. How does this look? Oh, it's not quite done. Not quite. I got all my stepmom silver. And then I got this for my stepdad. See, it says R. Von Eggers. That's my stepdad. Hi, Ma Von Eggers. And it's like two cups. For, it's like a shot glass and a, and a cup. It's so great. I love it no reason. Step parents. Underrated. It's still not done. This is my mom who taught me how to make the cake. We used to make it for her catering company. You can see her gigantic vantage cigarette. So great. And then this is another picture of her. She quit smoking, but she still chews Nicorette gum instead, constantly. My mom had a catering company when I was little. She was a, had a little catering company, and this was the, one of the main cakes. As a sheet cake, we made it as a wedding cake in four layers, and as a rolled-up cake, it was either Bouche de Noël or whatever. So I, I made this a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. People could order just a cake. And it was my job to make the cake since I was 10. I was that I had to fulfill all the cake orders. So that's why I make this cake. So chocolate seems to be melted. Take it out. And you can't put your eggs in it while the chocolate's hot or it gets really hard. So just to speed things up a little, put it in our freezer. Sometimes those seeds get in there. That's the only problem, but it doesn't matter. Okay, we'll leave it out there just a couple minutes. Once the chocolate is melted and it's cooled off a little bit, you already have like a little less than a quarter of a cup of espresso in there. Put a little vanilla in there. You just separate the eggs. You want to put the whites in the mixing bowl because we're going to beat them. And then you put the yolks in with the... Now, if I were doing this for my mom, I would take the umbilical cord out, but I'm not doing that. Now, this is where my stepdad would say, In Germany during the war. <laughs> Tell some story about, like, eggs were... We had one egg to share with everybody. <laughs> and then about, you know, the egg is not this color. Really, the real egg is a deep orange color or whatever. We'll never know. 
I remember learning to do this and the first thing I made by myself was a cheesecake and it had a lot of eggshell in it but everybody was very polite about it. One, two, three, four, five. So let's see. I know there's a little piece of eggshell in here somewhere, but we'll just forget about it. We'll just put a teeny pinch of salt in here, just really it's the tiniest bit. Okay, so this gets mixed and this gets beaten with a little sugar. You just want to incorporate the eggs and chocolate all together. So, I mean, it has happened to me many times where you know, you don't let, let it cool enough and it just hardens up and that's always a pain. But, you know, you start over. There are a lot of things you cook that turn on you like that, like fondue. Okay, so that looks good. And then let's, um, let's beat this. I think it's like a quarter of a cup of sugar. Plus, I, I always, you know, a little less sugar is not going to hurt. This is a half a cup. I have a quarter of a cup measuring cup somewhere. You're gonna beat this into stiff pieces. It doesn't really have speed, so. It's just one speed. But it's still good. Gradually add the sugar. just about ready. So it needs to be a little stiffer than this, but you can see it's starting to get shiny. Just let it go a little longer. Great. Okay, the next step is to mix these two things together. The way you do it is you take about a third of the whites and you put it in with the yolk and chocolate mixture. And this part, just mix it together so it's smoothly incorporated. But the rest of it, you have to fold pretty gently. It's so pretty. Try, try to make it even, you know, that there's not any lumps of chocolate and no lumps of egg whites. But it's a very forgiving cake. Whatever happens, nobody's going to notice. And I always feel like people are too polite to ever say something tastes bad in front of you anyway, so... Don't worry. They'll say it when they get home and you'll never know. So now the rest of this needs to be pretty carefully folded. Some people work hard to beat all that air into the egg whites. You don't want to lose it all. So try to, um, again, make it a nice even mixture without just gentle. Fold it as much as possible. and. You'll see, when we pour it into the pan, you'll see how good a job we did or didn't do, and the next time you can be a little more careful. I don't know, I'm used to making like 40 in a row, so not all of them come out. We're just making one. Let's be careful. So I think this is pretty well mixed. Okay, so the next step is you have your prepared pan. So we can pour this in once we get all the batter in there. Maybe the very first couple of times we made this, I wanted to lick the spatula, but after all these years, I don't even like eating this cake anymore. Don't, don't smush this, but just gently guide it a little. Then we'll shake it out so that it gets into all the corners. Mm. I'm not being that careful. But anyway, that's your basic idea. Now, it's ready to go in the oven. So I'm gonna put it in. Don't forget the wax paper sticking out is gonna burn a little. Five minutes or so at 375, and then turn it down to 350, and then about 10 minutes. Usually my maid does this kind of thing, but I couldn't get her tonight. 
the filling is just whipped cream with cocoa in it. Grass-fed heavy cream. Yes, people like this stuff. So a cup of heavy cream and about three tablespoons of Drasty's cocoa. Pee pee. Do you want this? I'm running out of this. Messy. And then also sugar, but I'm just gonna put like a handful of sugar in because I, I don't, I mean, I don't really eat this that much, but I don't like a sweet filling because the ganache is so sweet. And then another possible old wives' tale is if you put this in the fridge, it'll incorporate better when you mix it. That's what my mom told me to do, so put it in there. It's, I, I guess it is kind of time consuming. While the cake is cooling off, let's whip up the filling. I'm just going to mix this with the spoon a little bit before I'm paranoid. Actually, I'm going to mix it with the knife. I'm sure it will come together. Right? Right. Okay. Now you have some chocolate whipped cream. That's hopefully not too sweet. Not really sweet enough, but... Just gonna pop that cake outside. I just want it to be a little, a little cooler. Don't cool it enough, then it sticks to the wax paper. And if you cool it too much, then it cracks a little bit while you're rolling it. It's so convenient in the winter. Oh, cola, cola, cola. I get you, I get you, I get you, I get you, I get you. Basically, you're gonna invert the cake on there, peel off the wax paper that you're cooking it with, gently roll it up, tape it together, and pop it in the freezer. So I'm just going to have some gaffer's tape here. This tape. All right, I'm going to take the cake out. Oh, it's okay. Could cool a little more, but... This is where I wasn't so careful and some cake got under. There's not much to it. You invert the cake on top of your wax paper, let it fall out, and then gently peel this off. I, I wish I'd been more careful, but you, you'll see, once it gets together, nobody will notice, but you know, you can see if we spent a little more time spreading it out, it would look better and we'd all be happier now, but. So this is the filling. Just plop a little on. Again, you don't want it to cool off all the way because you want it to still be pliable so you can roll it up. Don't put it all the way to the edge, but almost. Hold on, get in your bed. Anyway, that's good. I'm going to do it the other way so we have the extra wax paper at the end there. So you just want to kind of guide it. And there's some cat hair in there, which is always good. It's in everything I make. Gentle. Gentle. You'll see when you make this at home, it'll turn out much better because you won't rush. You can get your pan so you have something to rest it on. And lift it gently so it doesn't crack too much. You put it in the freezer because um, when you frost it, it needs to be frozen hard or the ganache picks up pieces of the cake. Speaking of which, let's quickly make the ganache. About a cup of heavy cream. And a little bit of espresso in here. You can put a little pinch of salt in there too. Two, four, six, eight. We'll use the rest of this chocolate. Don't boil it. Another thing that could easily ruin everything. I guess that's the only bad thing about this cake is there, there's 
a lot of places where it can get ruined, but. Oy vey. All right. You know, I remember in my house we had these huge 10 pound blocks of chocolate and these 50 pound boxes. And if you would go down with the hammer and there's a little scale down there and like chop off pieces of chocolate and weigh it on the scale and then bring it to the stove. <laughs> So this could probably be chopped even smaller, but oh, the days of being careful are long over for me. Heat your heavy cream up. I often don't really heat it up enough because I'm afraid it's going to boil. So often my ganache doesn't come out as shiny as it should. The hotter you make the cream, I think, the shinier it is. I think. Ah, it's hot enough. Something terrible is going to happen. So just start putting your chocolate in. Oh my god, please. Don't let something bad happen. This is scary. Now the trick is just to continue stirring it until it all comes together. And it seems like it's not going to, but just keep stirring and you'll see it ends up turning into a uh, really thick, nice. It's starting to come together a little bit here. You know what I still can't ever make is, I used to make mayonnaise all the time until one time I was talking to my mom on the phone and I was like, I'm making mayonnaise and she's like, mayonnaise, doesn't it ever separate for you? And I was like, what do you mean? And she's like, if you don't do it right, it separates. And I was like, it does? <laughs> and I haven't ever been able to make mayonnaise since then. So that's basically it for the ganache. It's nice and melted and smooth and um the best thing to do now is to let your cake freeze for about an hour and the ganache needs to become a little cool too so that it can get a better consistency so let's take a break for a while i think the ganache is cool enough and i'm hoping the cake is frozen enough this looks like a pretty good consistency This is, we're gonna do it. It's not perfect, but. So this is what, this is the bouche de Noel. We're gonna cut the ends so that they look nice and neat, and we're gonna use them to create little branches. This should look like a log. So you can do this. And then you can kind of place it like this so that it looks like it's a branch growing. See how it's like a branch? So just, then you get a nice, you know, it looks pretty. And then you can also use this to kind of fill in. This is really sweet. You know what it is because you saw me making it. It's just heavy cream and chocolate. So, you know, don't put it on too thick. And you see how I'm just letting the chocolate lay on top of the cake. There are all sorts of things you can do. We used to make um, meringue mushrooms. And we just make the meringue and you squeeze out little dollops for the mushroom heads. And using a pastry bag, like squeeze out little lines for the mushroom bodies. And then you make mushrooms to sit around your log. Or you can just put some uh, powdered sugar on it and make it look like snow, but that's a little gauche, I think. But you can see it's so forgiving because the ganache is, you can just keep layering it on. Another great thing about this cake is you make it, you put it in the freezer, and then you can serve it, even serve it completely frozen. It's delicious. It's heavy cream inside, so it can really serves nicely frozen or you can let it come to room temperature and then serve it and then put it back in the freezer when you're done hang around the house for the whole holiday time and serve all your guests it's great to have let me just look at the side this this is kind of messy here so let's call that done then I'll just clean the edges a little and we'll Get a fork out and try to make it look like bark. <laughs> I'm a mess. Probably making it worse. But we'll just do this little. Okay, so 
as the last step, just take a fork and you can just make some irregular lines in it. It looks kind of like bark, right? But that's it. This is the bouche. And I think this would probably serve about... How many people do you think this serve, PP? I think this would serve about 15 people. It's extremely rich, as you saw. That's it. Bouche de Noël. You will log. Stick it in the freezer. Once it gets frozen, then you can put some light saran wrap over it. But until it's frozen, just leave it uncovered. That's it. It's pretty fun.